So grounding and bonding, my friends. Uh, let's go. Okay, everybody is looking at the same sheet that I'm, I'm, uh, I'm looking. Okay, here you go. Okay. All right, so you guys should have two pages, uh, front and back. The first one will identify, the first page will identify how to put the system together. The second page is identifying how to calculate each one of these grounding and bonding. Before I start, guys, there's two terms that you have to be very familiar with in the electrical industry. One of them is grounding, and the other one is bonding. Both of them will achieve the same thing. We ground, we ground systems to facilitate the operation of overcurrent protection devices, the relays, the circuit breakers, the fuses, meaning make sure that they work on their ground fault, they trip fast enough to protect you from fire. So one major thing, major thing for ground and unbinding us is to facilitate the operation of overcurrent protection device, one major thing. The second major thing for grounding and bonding is to put all the electrical all the electrical equipment at the same potential. Meaning, if Chad is standing right here and grabbing on one switch gear frame, and the other hand is on the other switch gear frame, if these and one of them is energized, I'm not going to have a voltage between me. If they're all bonded together, they're all sitting at the same potential. A good example of this guy is the birds that stand right on the top of the power lines. Have you ever wondered why don't they get electrocuted when they're standing right on the top of a power line, right? Because both feet are on the same one. Potential. In order to get electrocuted, you have to have a potential between two parts of your body. That's that's typical. In order to get, get electrocuted, I have to put a potential. How do you get a potential? I can tie you to 120 on this side, one leg on 120, and the other leg have to be to zero. If I, I tie one leg to 120 and the other leg to 120, there is no potential. 120 minus 120 is what? Zero. So the whole idea of bonding, especially bonding, is to put the electrical equipment at the same potential. All of them are sitting at zero potential, zero potential, zero voltage. Can I get thumbs up that we understand why we bond things? Yes, no? So if you were on a power line touching one phase and then touching, um, let's say, the pole. You're doomed. You're doomed. <laughs> or you're touching the other phase. You're doomed. If you are swinging, imagine yourself swinging from one line, power lines, sitting in a swing and swinging on that power line, just one line, one power line, you're okay, nothing will happen to you. That's how they do guys when they clean these power lines. They tie the chopper to the power line, right? And they put themselves, the chopper will be at the same potential as the power line, and they start cleaning them. The most important thing is to put yourself, to put the equipment that you're handling at the same potential. We don't deal with high, or high voltage. On the low voltage system, everything must be bonded together. There shall be no voltage between any two equi electrical equipment or mechanical equipment. Otherwise, somebody grab on this side, on the other side, you get potential between two hands. Heart, current goes right through your heart, right? Or one leg, the other leg, current through right your uh, private stuff, or, it, you know, as long as you don't have a potential between. So, Facilitate the flow of the electrical, the, the, the overcompetition device, operation of over, overcompetition device, put all the equipment at zero potential for safety. And the third one, guys, and these are directed from the code, the third one that we use is to, um, to stabilize the voltage to ground. Because if you have 120, if you have 120, you want to have 120 everywhere in your facility. You don't want to have 120 here, 150 there, 130 here. So to facilitate, to have an, an, uh, the right potential to ground, they bond the system. So we, uh, to stabilize, they, they call it stabilizing the voltage to ground, the voltage to ground. They want to stabilize the voltage to ground. That's another uh, major part that why we ground the system, grounding the system. And also lightning, to protect from lightning. A grounded systems are more resilient to handling lightning, more resilient than ungrounded system. If you don't ground systems, so that's why most of the system that we use in the U.S. is grounded and all over the world is a grounded system, grounded system. What does that mean? You take one of the windings and you tie it to Mother Earth. So that's that's really why we, we bonding and grounding is a major part. Any comments, any questions before we go into the rules? No? I hope I didn't put you to sleep yet. Okay, let's start from the top. It's very important, guys, to understand what this system is. Right at the top here where you can see... Um, up in this area here, um, we have a service. This, by the way, all these boxes are panels. The boxes, my boxes are panels. The first box right here is your service panel. 
I'm going to draw right in here. This is my service panel. Everybody can see. So this is where I bring the power, three phase power, the N and neutral directly to my building. Cool? Everybody's okay with this? Coming from the top, that's how I bring the power from, um, from, the, from the utility into my building. They call it service entrance equipment. I'm assuming it's 4277, but it could be any voltage. Cool? So that's the first panel that you have. The second panel, my friends, that we have is um, from the main panel, I have, um, actually, I do have set two buildings. I have building A feeding building B. So take this. This is another panel in a separate building. Can you guys, uh, no, I'm sorry. This one is in the same building. This is a sub panel in the same building. So this is the main panel. This is a sub panel. And then we need to do the bonding and grounding between a sub panel and a main panel. Cool. That's another example. The third one, guys, right in here, and very, very important to understand how the system is. The third one is right in here. This is Chris is separately derived system. I have a transformer, almost always, well, almost always, delta Y transformer feeding a panel. This could be a receptacle panel, sub panel, same building, sub panel, same building. What's the difference between these two sub panels, Nick? One of them is 48277, no transformer. The other one is 28120, a transformer. Both of them are sub panel in the same building. Can I have thumbs up? We understand the three panels so far. Separately, <clears throat> separately derived system. This panel is, I, I added next to it, the transformer is called separately derived system. Separately derived system because you create your own neutral and you bond the neutral. Very, very important, guys, to understand the difference between this panel here and this panel here. This panel is driven 480, no transformer. The second sub panel, Ashley, is actually a panel that's driven by a transformer, by a, by a transformer, and they call it a separate derived system. Why? Because there, there's no, two neutrals. Can you guys see the white neutral that I have right here? This is a derived neutral right here from the transformer. The top neutral right in here, that gray, is supposed to be gray right here, that's the 480. Uh, 277 in neutral, and I have the 1228 neutral. There are two neutrals. That's why we have separated drive system in this area. Any question about the separated drive system? A separated drive system is a, a power generation system or conversion system that you create a neutral and you bond it. You create a neutral. You create a neutral, right? We create a neutral right here, a different neutral. Can I have thumbs up, guys? Rob? So how many panels do we have so far? Three panels, right? Now the one at the bottom, the one at the bottom is, the one at the bottom, uh, Ashley, my friend, right in here, it's uh, another panel, sub-panel, but can you guys emphasize what is, why, why do I have another sub-panel? Can you guys see where at the bottom, what is it? Separate building. So we have building A here, where we're sitting. I have the switch gear, and I need to go feed building B via a feeder, not a service, right? How do I know, the, how am I going to do bonding and grounding for a separate building? That's why I have this example here for you. So the four panels that you have, um, Phil, my friend, will cover almost all the situations that you're going to have at the low voltage level and the AC level. No DC here. If you want a DC grounding, come to your chat, to one of Chad's presentation about grounding. This is no DC grounding here, all AC. Okay, so any question, guys, let me, let me zoom a little bit out here and emphasize the three panels a little bit more and emphasize the four panels that we have. Any question guys about the four panels that we have? We have panel number one here. Uh, this is the main panel. Panel number two, panel number three, and panel number four via transform. Okay? Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We understand how the system is. Why did I pick up these four panels? Because these are typically everything you have in your building. So Chris, do you agree with me? Panel number two could be a lighting panel, could be a mechanical panel, any panel that's running at 208. Uh, Nick, you, you agree with me that the 208, 120 panel, 99.99% is gonna be a receptacle panel. Sometimes maybe a lighting panel, but 99.9% .9 receptacle panel. Panel number three, it's gonna be a panel, 480, in a separate building, in a separate building. So I have to go outside the building to reach a, a separate building. Any question about these three, three panels? Everybody understand why what we're doing here, right? Everybody can see, guys, I have the color coding for all the 480 system um, and the 28 system. The, the phases are color coded. 
um, for the most for the most part with the neutral. So that's basically the, the the how the system is put together. The second thing I'm going to emphasize, guys, is the numbers. Can you guys see wherever the number is represent? I mean, I'm only interested right now in sizing the green, right? Because we're doing bonding and grounding. Everything green is number. So this is, so if you come over here, the way the system goes, and I'm going to just summarize it very quick for you guys. Okay, let's start with the main panel. Chris, at the main panel, what do we do? We have a neutral and we have a ground. What do we do guys at the main panel? Every main panel surface. We bond the neutral to the ground. Bond the neutral to the ground, that's number three. Why did they call it number three? Because I'm going to tell you how to, based on the code, how to size it. We're engineers. How are you going to size it? So I need to have a copper or aluminum wire and bond or a bar. As you guys see when we guys at MEI, how they do them. They have a copper bar, tie them together, sized accordingly. So I need to bond the ground and the neutral together. That's called number three. This is called main bonding jumper. Main bonding jumper. Cool? Okay, so if you guys go to main bonding jumper right in here, number three, main bonding jumper request, main bonding jumper, it's uh, 250.28D, uh, uh, and we size it based on this table. And if we are paralleling, uh, we have to multiply it. And, um, uh, and if we are going larger than this number, then you have to take larger than 1100 KCM, you have to take 12.5%. And these these guys, we, we wrote these before. We wrote these rules before. So we wrote these rules before. Any question, guys, about number three, the main bonding jumper? So when you go to number three, that's how you size number three. Wherever number three located in this drawing, you're going to size number three based on this. Okay, uh, let's go back to Ashley, number one. Number one is called the grounding electrode conductor. It's going to a ground bar. You guys see the ground bar that we went into the building? Uh, when we went into Boston Scientific, there was a big ground bar on the wall, right? And all these copper conductors are coming and tied to it. That's exactly what we're, what we're looking here, ground bar. So number one is grounding a conductor that's going to the ground bar. Cool? Okay, so if you go to number one, right to the service, number one is a grounding a conductor right in here, right? Size based on 66, and here's how you size it. And size based on... The feeder, the feeder conductors. You're going to write, read through that. We size it based on the largest feeder conductors. If we have multiple runs, we parallel, we multiply the run by the overcompetition device. So that's number two. And these are not new to you guys. I know some of them are not. Okay, number two, Chris, my asking me, number two, what's the difference between number one and number two, Chad? Nothing. Number one is grounding electrode conductor. Number two is also grounding electrode conductor, except it's special. Why it's special? Because you don't have to go higher than a certain value. So if you're tying to a ground rod, Ashley, or tying to a water pipe, you don't have to go larger than number six. That's why I, I specify it, I put it separately. If you're tying to a ground rod or a water, you don't have to go higher than what? Than number uh, number six. That's why we I put two by itself here. Here's number two, grounding it to system the only thing it says guys it's uh, larger you don't have to go larger than number six copper on these you don't have to does that mean you can't you can if you want to but you don't have to for the water pipe for the water tying to the water and to the ground rod you don't have to go larger than number six that's yeah to the bar yeah yeah to the bar and actually if you go to the switch gear directly the same thing applies to it but Highly unlikely in a major building, guys, you will never go directly from a ground rod into the switch gear. There is a grounding bar that you tie multiple, multiple ground rods going to that bar. And from the bar, you also ground the steel of the building, the water, anything electrical. And then from there, you take one going directly into the switch gear. Okay, any question, guys, about this grounding the service? Any question about grounding the service? So... And the H2O and the ground rod, these are grounding electrode system. This is not the first time we heard about grounding electrode system. The code say, Ashley, you have to have only one grounding electrode system. That's it. Only one. But, God forbid, if, the, if, if that one happened to be a water, water pipe or a ground rod, you need to supplement by another. So if you have a ground rod, you have to have a water. 
or if you have a water, you have to have a ground rod, or if you have one ground rod and you don't have water in the building at all, you have to have another ground rod. So if you're dealing with ground rod and water, you have to have two. But if you're grounding through the building, you can only have one, you, you can only, you only need one. You only need one. So, um, so that's a catch 20, 20, catch 22 guys also tell you if, you, if there are other grounding electrode system inside your building, then you have to bond to them. So long story short, without getting into all the mess of the ground, when you get into any building, a steel building, you have to bond to the steel of the building. You have to drive a ground rod and bond to a ground rod. And you also have to, most likely because you have to supplement the, uh, the steel and you have water, so you have to bond to the water. If you have a concrete building, the foundation of the concrete building makes a concrete in, uh, encased electrode. They call it concrete encased electrode. You have to bond to the concrete encased electrode. You also have to bond to the water. And if you have beams going, uh, sitting on these foundation, you have to bond to the beams. So almost always, you end up bonding in any building to a couple of ground rods, to the steel of the building, if it's steel building, and to the ray bar of the concrete if it's a concrete building. Cool? So you're going to do it right at the surface. That's we do this right at the surface. Any question guys about the one, two, and three? One, two, and three. You guys have done this one before. I just highlighted it for you. One, two, and three piece of cake, right? Now the, the one that I'm not showing here, what if chance, what if I have uh, here's a steel of a building? There you go. You take it to the steel. This is steel of a building. Take another wire to the rear bar. Uh, there is a big tank sitting there, uh, and I will use it as an exhaust grounding system. Here's another big tank here, and you tie it directly into the grounding electrode bar. Any grounding electrode system, lightning, there's a bunch of lightning um, ground rods in the building. You have to bond them together. So I bring all my lightning system ground rods here and tie them directly to the ground bar. All the system are tied together. Generator. Remember how generator goes? We have generator outside. By code, you have I have gen here, gen one and gen two. They are going to be grounded outdoor. And then you're going to grab that ground and bring it to where? To the rear bar. Tie it together to the same rear bar. Any question guys about grounding at the surface? Why would you want to do that with the generator? Because a grounding electrode system must be bonded together. And the code says, guys, if your generator is sitting outside, if your generator is sitting outside, you have to, to, to have to drive a ground rod right next to the generator. If it's outside, if it's inside, if it's inside, you can tie the generator directly to the ground bar, no question. If your generator is sitting outside, you have right next to the generator, you have to drive a ground rod, tie the frame of the generator to the ground rod, bond, if it's a separated drive system, bond the neutral to the ground rod there. Now you have a separate drive system, but one little thing left, the ground rod that you put for the generator has nothing to do yet with the other ground rod. So you have to grab a conductor and tie it to the ground rod. It doesn't have to be at the bar. It could be tied to the other ground rod in your system, too. Any question, guys, about grounding at the surface? Grounding at the surface. OK, so the, the let me close that one. The thing, so, the, so number three, anybody knows what number four is? Look at number four. Can you guys see number four? Number four, Chris, you came from an open switch gear. This, the bottom of the switch gear is open, right? When you guys were looking at the switch gear at EMI, what happened to the bottom of them? They open. So you're coming with rigid metal conduit to the bottom of the switch gear. How are you going to tie the metal rigid conduit to an open bottom of a switch gear? You can't tie it with the, with the grounding uh, bushings. There's no, there's no bottom to tie to. Then you require to have a ground, uh, a conductor that's called the uh, uh, equipment bonding conductor. Let me just see the number four. Equipment bonding jumper, they call it. Equipment bonding jumper, if you guys look at it. Equipment bonding jumper, but this equipment bonding jumper, Chris, they call it the supply side. Why do you guys think it's a supply side? Can I, this is the equipment bonding jumper is the most confusing. Equipment bonding jumper supply side. Why do you guys think it's supply side? Because that's the side where you, the power is coming from. 
right? The overcamp friction device will be most likely sitting right here, right here, right? So this is the supply side. This side is the supply side of the power. Can I get you to understand the equipment bonding jumper supply side? So I have 12 conduits. Each one of them is bringing four conductors, 500 kcm to a 4,000 amp switch gear, or 11. So the, all these conduits, rigid metal conduit, coming to the bottom of the switch gear. What do you need to do to these conduits? You need to bond them. What size conductor you need to bond them with? Number four will tell you what size conductor. Cool? So let's go look at number four, guys. See what, how do they size it. If you look at number four, equipment bonding jumper, it takes you to the article 250.102C, equipment bonding jumper supply side, and guess what, Chris, how they do it? They do it exactly like a main bonding jumper. Exactly like a main bonding jumper. Can you guys see that? You go to 250.66, and if it's more than 1100 kcm, you need to take a 12.5% of the feeders. KCM. Can I have thumbs up that we know, Ashley? You guys know that? Rob? Uh, Jackson? Okay. Everybody understand the equipment bonding jumper on the supply side? The supply side equipment bonding jumper. Supply side equipment bonding jumper. Cool. Everybody knows why we bond the conduit? We're coming from the bottom of the switch gear. We can't tie metal to metal. We don't have connection metal to metal on the bottom of the switch gear. If we do, then the grounding bushings will take care of you. No problem. If you have PVC, good example. If you have PVC, then you don't have to tie anything. Yep, you have PVC, no equipment bonding jumper exists. Ah, thank you. The power company, that's the most misleading concept, guys. Um, can you guys see what's coming from the power company? What's coming from the power company? Coming phase A, phase B, phase C, and here's what's coming. And a neutral. Does the power company provide you with an equipment grounding conductor or grounding electrical conductor? No. All what they give you is four conductors in a three-phase system. Is there neutral Neutral grounding? Is the power company yes. neutral Yes. Well, we yes. But it's it's created by them, maintained by them, separated separates from us. So it's so they're grinding the neutral. They're dry, yes, they ground the neutral at their side. Absolutely. So then we have to regrind. We have to bond it. Anybody can tell why? Because that's gonna take a long time to get nailed. No. Do you know what the issue is? Take this. I don't, this is a whole topic. Here. Take this. What happened now? Here's the, here's the coming from the utility. Let me just draw coming from the utility here. So here's phase A. Here's uh, phase B. Phase C. And where's my neutral? I'm going to grab my neutral from the center of this to the neutral. Cool. Here's my semi uh, Y conductor. And it looks crappy, you know. Let me just see if I can get it. Um, that's the problem with, with writing on Word. It doesn't allow you. Oh, come on, bud. All right. So, you guys use imagination. So, we have phase A, phase B, phase C coming from a neutral, right? But the center of the transformer is grounded right here. And here's my neutral, right? That's the center of the transformer. What happens if you if if they lose if you're not grounded? What happens if they lose this tie to the ground? Then you have float what they call a floating neutral. Floating neutral. What happens if you lose the neutral? You you lose the neutral. Storm cam. You have overhead conductors, and it knocks down the overhead conductors, and only the neutral lost. What happened? Now you lost your neutral. What happens if you lost your neutral? You have a flu and you're not bonded. And you're not bonded. What happens if you lost your neutral and you're bonded? You're doomed. Because now voltage to neut the voltage to, to ground to neutral should be 277. Now it could be anything. If you it depends upon the system. Is the system balanced, not balanced? You could have 200 to ground. The reason why we bond the neutral to ground here is to stabilize the voltage to ground. The utility do does it. And we have to do it inside our building because if we are to lose the utility neutral, we're still up and running, and at least until they fix their neutral, right? And, and nothing will burn in our building. 
very, very important as bonding the neutral to the ground. Any question? So could you give us just like a quick example, like let's take, take the two, 208 120. Okay. And we lose the neutral. Okay. So, so everything is shared. Now everything that's lined to neutral yeah. is shared between, uh, they're sharing uh, two eight. The fattest, fluffiest piece of equipment is going to take the largest amount of voltage. See, out of the 28, it's going to take uh, uh, 200 volt exaggeration, maybe 180. The smallest piece of equipment is going to take the lift over, will be what, 28 volt or something. So they share, do you guys remember what when, when you did, I don't, I don't know if we did it with me, but we do it, you should have done it with Gary if you haven't done it. Losing a neutral, or they call it open neutral. Open neutral on the load, right? What happened when you open neutral on the load? That's exactly, but this is even worse. You're open neutral at the service, not on a brand circuit. You have an open neutral at the service. The whole building is doomed versus open neutral on a brand circuit or a feeder. So the voltage, the load will share the voltage equally. It will share the voltage based on the impedance. The largest impedance will take the highest amount of load. They're in series. You have, you have two loads in series. Yeah, the largest impedance will take the largest voltage. The largest impedance load will take the largest, it goes by impedance when you put them in series. Take R1 and R2 and put a voltage. No, when we lose a neutral, they become in series. You're right, in parallel, you're right. In series, it's the opposite. When you lose the neutral, they're in series. So I'm going to stop right here, guys, just for the sake of the, the time here. Okay. So when you lose, the most important thing is to bond the neutral to the ground. If you don't bond the neutral, you're doomed. Okay? So come coming down from, so that's at the service. Any question, guys, about bonding at the service? Bonding at the service. Why we bond at the service? Now, I'm going to go to the first. Uh, I'm going to take you guys first to the panel number, the sub-panel. Can you guys see where the sub-panel? Then I brought my feeder to the sub-panel. With that feeder, Chris, I need number six. Number six is an equipment grounding conductor, piece of cake. Number five, can you guys see five? The bonding, the conduit to the box uh, from both sides. Number five, it's called equipment bonding jumper load side. So let's go to four and five. Number five, number five, Oops, where is number five? Number five is equipment bonded jumper load side. Can I emphasize the word load side? And how do you size it? Based on 250.122 based on our competition device. Okay, number five. Number six is the equipment grounding conductor that you guys have done with me many times. The equipment grounding conductor. But number number uh, number five, equipment bonded conductor. Equipment bonded jump uh, conductor load side. Why it's the load side? Which load side is this? The load side of the over friction, the main over friction device. Take this, right here. Can you guys see that? So here's the over friction device right in here. This this connection here is on the load side. This is the load side. This is the line side, right? This side is the load side of the over friction device. Less dangerous. If, if anybody could, who cares? The question would be who cares, Chad? It's the load side is less dangerous than the line side. So the size is slightly different, which is smaller wire. That's all. And, the, and also this piece tying the conduit to the box. Now, when you have an EMT conduit with the right bushing guys, the EMT conduit will act as an equipment grounding conductor for a certain length of distance. After a couple of hundred feet, you start, you have to start providing an equipment grounding conductor in the EMT. If it's a longer distances. So that that connection here, number five, you might not need it. You might not need it, that connection. Because the especially if you have rigid, threaded rigid with bonding connection on both sides, you don't need it. But if you have a bonding bushing, sometimes most of it will be an EMP with a bonding bushing, and you tie the EMP bonding bushing with a wire into the grounding bar inside your panel. What size wire do I need? to bond the grounding bushing that came with the EMP conduit here, fitting to the, the panel. That's called equipment bonding um, 
jump for a supply side. And we size it exactly like an overcompletion device, uh, like uh, an equipped magnetic conductor. Any question guys about number five and number six? Number five and number six. Number five and number six. Yes, sir. There is a nice book, guys. Uh, um, forget the book now. I, I uh, do it. Um, grounded and bonding. What the heck is that book that we use in the? In... Anyway, I'll get you the distances. But if you go hundreds of feet, a lot of engineers, guys, on feeders, they pull an equipment grounded conductor anywhere. When you bond to EMP bushings and couplings, when you bond to EMP bushings and couplings are rigid, guys, they are at the longer distances, bigger feeders, not reliable. So a lot of engineers end up, even though the EMP is an approved equipment grounding conductor based on the code, we, re we refer this one only to branch circuits. We allow the EMP to, 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 to be an equipment ground conductor for branch circuits. A lot of engineers pull an equipment ground conductors, engineers, in the conduit for feeders. You have a, a 4,000 amp feeder. Do you really want to depend on the EMP conduit and the electrician tightening all these lock nuts on a ground pole that size? So you pull an equipment ground conductor with. Or you could be using PVC too. That's also, if you're doing PVC, you have to pull an equipment ground conductor inside the conduit, right? But you don't have to bond the conduit now. So number six, you might not have number six. If you have EMP conduit, the EMP will act as your number six equipment ground conductor. Unless you have longer distances, bigger feeders, 600 amp or more, it's a good idea to pull an equipment ground conductor with the panel. That's to cut around the whole panel. Rob, did I dance around the answer? <laughs> okay. So um, the, at the sub panel, Chris, what happened to the neutral on the ground of the sub panel? Do we ground them together? Do we bond them together at the sub panel? No. You only bond the neutral on the ground at one location, which is at the surface. You do not bond the ground and neutral at the second location. Right here, yes. If you bond them at the second location, your conduit will be a neutral carrying conductor. So if you have an unbalanced 100 amp load, and the 100 amp is there's 20 amps unbalanced. There will be a 20 amps going all the time, not just for short circuit, all the time through your conduits, back to and the shield of the coaxial cable that you have, because the shield of coaxial cable could be grounded from both sides. Everything metallic will be carrying current at normal condition, normal condition. That's dangerous, right? So that's why they don't want to, because they'll, you bond the conduit from both sides with a wire, what's going to happen to the current? It's going to split. Some will go through the conduit, normal, normal neutral current, not short circuit, and the other will go through the ground. Can I guess get your attention that there is no bonding in the second panel at all? And then you have to have an equipment ground conductor and equipment bonding jumper on the load side. Done. Cool? Now let's go to the separate drive system. That's where I want you to wake up, guys. Now let's go to the receptacle panel. How do you bond and ground at the separate drive system? There is a transformer here. When you come to a transformer, it's a delta Y. Can you, do you see any neutral coming on the line side of the transformer? No. You bring three phase delta. I have a neutral on the, on the, on, on the other side, the secondary side. So look what I did. I created neutral from the Y. Can you guys see that? I created my neutral from the Y. And I bonded the neutral to the ground at the separate drive system with a wire called number seven. This is a system bonding jumper. You take the neutral inside the transformer to the ground, bond it together with something called separately derived system. Separate, it's a separately derived system because it created neutral right here, right? And number seven, number seven right here, guys, this is called system bonding jumper. It's like the, it's like the main bonding jumper except for a transformer that I own and operate. Cool? All right, so if you guys go to number seven and see what number seven say, Number seven, um, if you look at number seven, it says system bonding jumper. Here's how we size them based on these. And we size them exactly like, uh, we size them exactly like, what was it, buddy? All bell. We size it like a main bonding jumper. Can you see, Chris, number seven? Size exactly like a main bonding jumper. No difference, like a main bonding jumper. Cool? So that's my separate drive system. Now, 
So let's go to number seven is easy. Me and Bondi jumper. Okay. Now look at number eight. Number eight, I have to go with a grounding electrode system, guys, directly to the ground aging electrode. This conductor number eight is called the grounding electrode conductor to that ground the separately derived system. It's like another service almost. You treat it like another service. Going all the way to the ground bar. So number eight, can you guys see number eight? Number eight is like number one. Number eight is grounding electrode conductor. You treat it 250.66 exactly like a, any, any other grounding electrode system, right? Based on the table 250.66. 250.66. Everybody can, can, you guys can see number eight, number eight, where number eight is. Okay. Um, is number five pointing to, can you guys change this one, please? Can you see where number five is pointing right here? Can you see where it's, it's pointing to? Can you make it point to this one here? This conductor? instead of pointing to number eight, number five should be pointing to this conductor here. Oops. Let me erase it. Right here. So number five should be pointing. Wait, no, I don't have any control over that. This piece right in here. Cool. Everybody can point to it. Okay. That's a mistake. All right, so number five is called the equipment bonding jumper uh, load side. Equipment bonding jumper load side. Cool. Number eight is a grounding electrode conductor. Now on the secondary side, on the secondary side, Chris, look at the secondary side. Do you see where 6.1, 6.1 actually came from 2011. In 2011, they changed the name of it, of that little piece here. This piece is called supply side bonding jumper. They call it supply side bonding jumper. The one that you take from the transformer into the panel, that piece of wire that you take from the transformer to the panel is called supply side bonding jumper. Why supply side bonding jumper? Because it's on the supply side, it's like a service of the transformer, supply side of the transformer right here, supplying this panel. It's called supply side bonding jumper. Who cares? You have to size it exactly like main bonding jumper. If you look at the 6.1, guys, 6.1, it's called supply side bonding jumper. Uh, it's based exactly like a main bonding jumper. Can you guys see how they size it? Exactly like a main bonding jumper. And th then number four, number four, this between the two panels, the conduit and the panel, if there's a between the conduit and the panel, that would be uh, number four, which, what did we say we'll call number four, guys? We called number four, uh, supply side bonding, uh, yeah, equipment bonding jumper supply side. Equipment bonding jumper supply side. Typically, typically, either you have number 6.1 or four, um, typically either or with these two. Typically, most likely you're gonna have 6.1 and you don't have four. The reason for this one, guys, because you have a, when you have a transformer, you have a flex that's going from the transformer into the panel. So I have a flexible metallic conduit going from the transformer to the panel. Inside that flex, I need to pull a supply side bonding jumper. How do I size it? Like I told you, main bonding jumper. Any question, guys? Any question to the supply side bonding? So, what, what you see is cover 90% of grounding and bonding in one sheet. 90%. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about, any question about the separated drive system? Any question about the separated drive system? This is called separated drive system. Why? Because I have a, a, a source of power called the transformer and I created a neutral and I bonded a neutral. Okay, so if you go down the last one, now I took the last panel, guys, it's called sub-panel in separate building. Can I have a sub-panel in a separate building? Yep. What do you need to do every time you have a sub-panel in a separate building? A lot of people. Look what you need to do. First, you need to create a new grounding bar. Well, or grounding. You need to have a grounding electrode system at the separate building by code. Cool. 
that grounding electrode system could be the water and the ground rod minimum, the steel, a ray bar if it's concrete building, um, the steel beams if it's a uh, steel building, all have to be tied to the grounding bar. Cool. From the grounding bar, you have to take number one, which is exactly the same like Chris, same as number one for a service, grounding electrode system going to the building, to the ground. Uh, and also you have to have an equipment grounding conductor and between the two buildings you have to have number five bond the conduit if you're coming from underground you have to bond the conduit when you have a feeder that feed a separate building guys it's exactly like any other sub panel except you have to create a grounding electrode system in the separate building you have to can i get you guys to understand the difference between this panel here the one that you're talking about, that panel, and the panel above it, right? Sub-panel, same building, sub-panel, separate building. The only difference is, the only difference is I have to create a grounding electrode system. What does that mean? Fancy name. You have to tie to the ground rod and the water and the ray bar, if it's concrete, and the steel, and any other system in your building. Any question guys about this? So this, hopefully, with these two pages, one page on both sides will summarize everything that you need to know about grounding and bonding. Now, if you're an electrician, guys, we go through identifying the couplings that goes to get you a good, good connection, all this stuff. For us, most of us are designers. Um, you get into sizing all these systems, put it together, accordingly, and we're good to go. Um, a quick... Recoup that if you have an EMT conduit or rigid and all these metallic, they act as an equipment grounding conductor, so you might not need an equipment grounding conductor. And unless you're a uh, major, unless the amp is high, we always pull an equipment grounding conductor. And if you're using flex at all times, if you're buying, if your feeders are flex at all times, you always pull an equipment grounding conductor with a flexible metallic conduit, liquid tight or non liquid tight. Any question, guys, about this sheet? Okay, what time is it? It's 9.35. Will you guys come back from a break? Now we're gonna take uh, two or three examples. How to calculate all these nine pins. Now we and hopefully we understand what the systems are put together. We're gonna take example and size them, piece of cake. Okay, let's take a break. Um, okay, so the, the second part that I would like you guys to do and we're gonna have a homework on is we're gonna take examples. I'm gonna put numbers for these uh, panels and we're gonna size the, all these uh, seven or eight things, right? So please, on the piece of paper that I gave you, I probably, if you need, I will make a PDF file and put it on the network guys for you for this one, so if you need a clean copy. But my intention is to write right onto this copy. Uh, if you need a clean copy, there is a PDF file will be about this copy. So let's start with this. Here's the example I'm gonna take. Um, Ashley, I have a fourth. I want to write things in. Uh, let's switch color is the prominent here. Let's write it in black. I have a 4,000 amp. I have a 4,000 amp switch gear. Okay, 4,000 amp switch gear, feeding a 2,000 amp uh, panel board, and also feeding another 1,000 amp panel right down here. And this panel, Chris. This panel right here is actually 225 amp panel. Okay, and I need to size all the grounding and bonding for the whole system. Repeat. I have a 4,000 amp switch gear coming from Excel uh, with the appropriate conductors, and that switch gear is feeding a 2,000 amp switch gear or switchboard in the same building. And out of the same switch gear, 4,000 amp, I have another 1,000 amp switchboard feeding a, another panel in a separate building. You guys, I cut it right here. You, everybody knows that this building here is separate building right here, right? Everybody knows that? Separate building. Then I have 225 amp receptacle panel, Nick, that's fit to a transformer. That's fit to a transformer. And I need to size. I need to size um, everything for these uh, for these systems. Uh, everybody knows what the voltage is. The voltage really doesn't matter as long as 600 volt or less. Doesn't matter what voltage. But the voltages are 480 for the high voltage and 28 for the low voltage part. 
Any question, guys? Any question about this system? So this system probably, Chris, will look something like this. If you write it here, 4,000 amp feeding, um, uh, one line diagram, uh, 2,000, 2,000 amp, and also down here feeding um, uh, 1,000 amp, and also down here via a transformer, transformer feeding um, uh, 225 amp. Cool, that's kind of the riser diagram for the whole system. A 4,000 amp feeding 2,000 amp switch gear, the 1,000 amp switch board, and via transformer feeding 225 amp. And I need to do the bonding and the grounding for the whole system. Bonding and grounding for the whole system. Any question guys about this? Okay, so then, hey guys. This guy's <laughs> okay. The only thing that we added is we put just a few guys right on the sheet that you have. At the top right here, 4,000 amp, 2,000 amp, 225 amp, and 1,000 amp, and we're going to size everything based on these. Can you guys take a few seconds? The only really major thing is 4,000 amp switch gear, feeding 2,000 amp switch gear or switchboard, 1,000 amp switchboard switch gear, and 225 amp, and we're going to size the, all the stuff for it. Cool. All right. Okay. And this one on the side is just a, a one-line diagram to show how the systems are tied together as a one-line diagram. Okay. Let's go. I'm going to remind you guys, you're all, you, all of you have these sheets. So I'm going to go size um, all the number ones, right? Wherever number one is, all the number ones for the uh, switch gear. So let's start for... Um, Main bonding jumper, uh, code McGrath conductor, number five, number eight. Okay, so let's go and size. Um, I'm going to size all these numbers that you're looking at, all these numbers. Um, let's do it first for the 4,000 amps with gear, and then we keep going. We keep going through all of them. Okay, so the first thing, guys, I want to uh, bring to your attention. Everybody has this sheet in front of you, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a big deal as we go through them. So let's go and size number one. So number one, this is for the 4,000 amp switch gear. Number one, there's two number ones. One for the 4,000 amp switch gear. I'm talking about the one for the 4,000 amp switch gear. And this is, number one, is grounding electrode conductor. The fancy name for number one is grounding electrode conductor. I'm going to take you guys down to, here's what we're talking about, grounding electrode conductor. We size it based on 250.66, right? But I will remind you, if you have parallel sets, if you have parallel sets, you have to have to multiply them, blah, 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 and all this good stuff. Okay. So, um... So the first thing is, um, I have a 4,000 amp switch gear. I need the grounding electrode conductor for this one. In order to do this, we need to find uh, the feeder size. Feeder, I, actually the technical terms for these is service, service, entrance, conductors. Fine. We need to size the service entrance conductor because we size the grounding electrode conductor based on the service entrance conductors. Piece of cake. And we take the 4,000 amp switch gear. I, Chad, clearly decided to run 12 runs. And if you guys do that one, you end up with 33, 333 amps. If you take this one, as we did in the past, to 310.15B16, under 75 degree column, right? You will end up with the following. You end up with 12, sets of how many conductors 12 sets of let's just I, usually we derate the neutral i just I'm, I'm not worried about the neutral here i'm just going to pull four neutral four conductors 400 kcm 400 kcm cool so that's the size of the feeder that the size of the service that's coming to this building 12 conduits 12 conduits rigid 
rigid metal conduit, steel rigid conduits coming from underground. Cool? All right, so that's the service. But I'm really not interested in this. I'm interested in uh, the size of the grounding and the conductor here. The grounding and the conductor, you take the number of runs, press the number of runs is 12, multiplied by the size is 400 kcm. That will get you 4800, 4800 kcm. Cool? All right, so that's step three. So step three, you take the 4800 kcm. We're going to take it to table 250.66 based on the sheet that I gave you guys. And regardless, regardless of whatever you do, you're going to end up with one conductor, number three R. A W G. Regardless of the, the value here, if you if you look at the 480, we if you look at 250.66, whatever you do, you're max at what? Three R. The largest that you can get. Even, even if we do the percentages. You can't, you, you are not, did you see what number one, does it say anything about the percentage number one? No. There's no, the grounding electrode conductor does not have the percentage. That's why I gave you guys that sheet. That sheet is a cheat sheet really good. You don't have to do the percentage. Now, I want to remind you when we went to uh, Phil, when we went to Boston Scientific, Mishad Kool Erickson ran 500 kcm conductor, 500 kcm for grounding it took that conductor that they ran for their services, two services, 500 kcm. This is the bare minimum. A lot of engineers guys go much higher than that. Be aware of this. So if you go to your company and they find for a 4,000 amp switch gear, they're running grounding it took conductor 500 kcm. Don't be, don't say Chad cheated me. That's the bare, 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 bare minimum. And we're sizing copper because Chad is vested in the copper companies. You can size aluminum as long as it's not it's not in a cor corrosive environment. Any question guys about number one? I want to remind you guys in the sheet that you looked at, there's two number ones. One for the 2000 AM, or one for the 1000 AM. This this calculation is for the 4000 4, AM, not for the 1000 AM. Cool? We don't confuse with, this is the one that's going from the 4000 AM. Any question about this guys? We have done this before. We've done grounding and bonding before. This is just focusing only on grounding and bonding. I care less about anything else. Just grounding and bonding for the system. Can I move on? Okay, so that's my grounding and bonding. Yes, that's a different calculation. Okay, I'm going to remind you that I'm going to do number two. Number two is, says also grounding electrode conductor, but this one is that nasty little guy that's going to the ground rod. Can you guys see where number one is going to the ground rod with the pipe? And what did we say about that special permission for that guy does not have to be more than what? Number six. Doesn't have to be no more than number six. So I'm going to go do number two. Everybody knows what number two is? Okay, so we're gonna go to number two. So number two, number two is also um, for the 4,000 4, amp switch gear calculation. And this is grounding electrode conductor. Uh, and I'm gonna write here special. Special because uh, if you go to article 250 guys, that's 66, it gives you a special permission for these babies. Um, so special, I'm going to say here just for the sake, I say same as number one, calculation wise. Same as calculation for number one. The only thing I want to say, no need, no need for more than, and I hate to write this being an engineer, uh, number one conductor, number six. So there is no need basically Based on and the article for this one, 250.66A. I hope it's still there. Based on this, you are allowed to just tie number six conductor. And it, it makes sense, guys. Can you imagine bringing a 500 kcm to a pipe or a rod? 
I don't know if you can have a fittings that can fit a 500 kcm. I guess you can buy, but a pipe. So they just want to limit you say, as long as number six is good enough. I want to remind you guys that went to the water pipe and the rod. If I have a steel or if I have a ray bar, that doesn't apply to it. There's also an exception there for a ground ring. I can't remember the ground ring is number two, I think, for a ground ring, if you're doing to a ground ring. Any question guys about number two? So number two is just a special grounding and electrical conductor that's going to the ground ring, uh, going to the uh, pipe. Any comments, any questions about number two? Let's go to number three. Number three, what is number three? Let's go to number three, guys. Number three is man bonding jumper. And I can't remind, I'm gonna remind you, this is for the 4,000 amp, 4,000 amp switch gear. Man bonding jumper for the 4,000 amp switch gear. So go back, go back, Chad. Can you guys see that? Uh, this is number four, number three, right here. The main bonding jumper between the neutral and the ground at the surface. At the surface. Okay, let's go do it. This will be number three. Ashley says main bonding jumper based on 250.28, 280D. And you go to 250.66. If you are more than 11 RKCM, what do you need to do? Nick, you take the 12 and a half percent. You're going to take the 12 and a half percent. Main bonding jumper. And a couple of other equipment bonding jumpers and so forth. You're going to see. Nick, this is going to be your, your where do you use which? Is right here. Based on this. Okay. So let's go, guys, um, directly into. Um, so, main bonding jumper, just for the sake of the time, you do the same. I'm going to say same as number one. Remember the same calculation that we did in number one? Except. Um, we came up, do you guys remember how, how um, we came up with 4,800 uh, 4, 4, KCM? This is directly from number one. We came up with 4,800 uh, 4, KCM, right? Then the 44800 KCM is more than 1,100 KCM. Then you need to apply the rule, right? And then you apply the 0.125 multiplied by 4800 KCM. And if you did your math right, if I did my math right, I end up with 600 KCM. And guess what? You six, then the last thing you take the 600 KCM. How do I know it's 600 KCM is standard or not? I have no idea, right? You're going to take it to chapter number nine, remember that? And table number eight. From there, a lot of both. If it was not a standard, you go up or down on the cable. Up, safer. And this will tell you, you just hit the jackpot here. And 600 amp is actually a standard, as we all know. So how many conductors do I need? One conductor. What size of this conductor? 100 and uh, um, 600 kcm. If it was 650, Chris, where do you need to go? 700 is a standard, I believe. You're going to go up. Can you guys write yourself that little arrow that Chad comes with right here? If it's not a standard, where do you go? You go up. Any question? Yeah, it seems kind of silly to take 600 KCM and treat a 3 out. I'm going back to the same. No, a 3 out. Ah, with that one? Yeah. 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 But I want to remind you why that one is there, though. The main bonding jumper has two functions. The main bonding jumper is there to take the ground fold directly to the transformer. So when you reach, you get, it's not going to the ground. Look at this. If you have a ground fault, and, and you open it, it's kind of warm here. If you have a ground fault anywhere in this system, you know what's going to happen? The ground fault current is going to jump from the ground, not to the rod. Well, part of it is going to go to the rod. The 90% of the ground fault current is going to jump to the neutral and go to the transformer. So that's supposed to carry the majority of your 
it's supposed to carry the majority of the ground fold current. So if we have a ground fold here, or here, or here, all of these are going to be going through the ground leaf conductor to the ground bar, right? From the ground bar, some of it, I would say 10% will go through the air to the transformer, the source of power at the XL. But 90% of it is going to jump from here to this one and jump or go to the transformer. The grounding, that conductor, number one place, is what we did, is really there for the majority of the time is to stabilize the voltage to the ground. And if you are to lose the neutral, you're not going to have a floating neutral. If you are to lose a neutral conductor, you're not going to have a voltage going up and down with the load. So, I don't know if I convinced you or not, Chris. Um, okay. 600 KCM. Any questions about 600 KCM? Okay. Let's go to number, which number now we are in? So we got number three. Number three. And everything is for the switch gear, guys, right? Uh, did I say the number three for a switch gear? Yep, 4,000 for a switch gear. Um, number four. Number four. Number four, Chris, my friend. This is equipment bonding jumper. Equipment bonding jumper. Again, we are at the 4,000 amp switch gear level. We're at the 4,000 amp switch gear level. Uh, equipment bonding jumper. I'm going to say right here, just to save me some time, same as uh, number three. Same as number three. And what did we come up with number three? One conductor, 600 kcm. So that's getting bonded to the conduit? That's bonding the conduit that's if they are metallic. If they're PVC, do you have number four? No. If you're coming with PVC from underground to a, an open switch gear, no need for it. If you're coming with um, with EMT, you're going to tie it. Uh, rigid, you're going to tie it. Uh, flex, you're going to tie it. Any question guys about this? Yes, sir. So you can run PVC if you're going to switch. Oh, yeah. No problem. No problem. It would seem more logical. Oh. PVC schedule 80, comment. P P PVC schedule 80, comment. Okay. Any question guys where number four is? Uh, a lot of people, if you go to number four, I went fast on that one. Number four, can you guys see where number four is? It says 250.102C. You're gonna use this exactly like the same main bonding jumper, right? And if you go where the heck is that number four, Chad, which one are you talking about here? Number four is that piece here on um, the service conduits, the service conduit. Chris, make sense? The service conduits. If they are metallic, if they're non-metallic, do I need to bond PVC? Well, do we bond wood? I used to think it's no, until you, if you read something about high voltage, yes. It's a whole different arena. You start bonding because of step voltage and mesh voltage. As the question as of now is no, we don't bond non-metallic. Yep. Okay, so that's number two and number three. Let's go to number four. Let's go to number five. Number five, equipment bonding jumper load side. Okay, so now we're moving to number five. Number five, guys, it's called equipment bonding jumper in the load side. Load side. Uh, did they see it supply side on the first one? Did they say supply side? Could you please write here? It's this is called supply side. Supply side. Why supply side guide or line side? The supply side because it's supplying power to the switch gear. Everybody knows that? Number four, it's actually a supply side. Supply side. Cool. Okay, so number four uh, number five, it's the load side. Okay, so for the load side, I want to go back, guys, directly into where we are. How to size it? It's equipment bonding jumper load side based on 250.122, right? And the overcome friction device, where does this baby is located? Can you guys see where it's located? It's located on both sides of the conduit. One in the switch gear and one on the switch board. 
Can you guys see that? Number five. And I, I want it for the 2000 amp switch gear. So I'm only concerned about this side here and this side. Both sides of the conduit, you bond them. Okay, so let's go to bonding number five. So if you go to number five, my friend, it works as bonding jumper. Um, but we have right here, you have to explain for what? For this is for a sub panel. 2000 the 2000 amp we're doing it for the 2000 amp you have to specify where, where are you doing it because there's many of them for the 2000 amp okay for the 2000 amp 2000 amp you're going to take this one press to table 250.122 based on the we size it based on over competition device guys exactly exactly like an equipment grounding conductor um and if you go there it will give you one baby 250 kcm done and we size based on the copper based on the copper equipment bonding jumper load side i am concerned about the sub panel the 2000 amp sub panel and you size it based on the over competition device what's the over competition device if my switch gear is a 2000 amp what do you think the over competition device is going to be in this case i'm assuming the over competition device is 2000 amp too Base, can, can you guys see this right here, over current protection device? I'm assuming the 2000 amp is an over protection device. Okay, since you guys are great, I'm going to jump directly into number six. Number six, guys, is equipment grounding conductor. Yes, sir. Where do you get the 250 from? Um, Table 250.122 yeah. for a 2000 amp. Yeah, I see 200. 250 KCM. Oh, okay. Yeah, what did they want? 250. Yeah. Why did you change that? Huh? Why did you change the whole Why do you do it based on over competition device? Well, because first, answer for you because the code says so. Um, that why do they? Why does the code say so? Right. The the quick answer is the code says so. Even the based on if you the criteria they give you guys, that's what they tell you to do. Why do they do it this way based on over competition device? Because the over competition device is the one that's going to trip, right? If you have a ground fault, the over competition device is the one that's going to trip. So you're going to size that piece of, of, of wire to be able to handle the amount of energy and heat until the over competition device trip. So the smarter than Chad went and did the analysis, guys, on the 2000 amp switch in circuit breaker, and they say, let's put a, a, con a conductor and run the equivalent of a short circuit that comes out of a system like this and see if this baby is going to burn before it's going to hold until the circuit breaker trips or it's going to burn. So there's some analysis that they did on these circuits, circuits um, and I'm going to stop right there. So, okay, the second thing, guys, the equipment ground conductor. Equipment ground conductor, the same way, exactly the same way, guys. Um, again, this equipment ground conductor is for the 2000 amp sub sub panel because there's many of them. Sub panel, sub panel. Okay, for this 2000 amp sub panel, piece of cake press, you take the 2000 amp to the same table, exactly like we did here, table 250.122, and you're going to end up with, with how many conductors. 250 kcm okay the question is how many conductors how many conductors do you need how many conductors you need one with every parallel set so i'm going to put x here x number of conductors and x equal x equal number number of parallel conductors, runs. Cool. So if you decided to parallel three sets, if you decided to parallel three sets, then this will be one, two, three, the same size. This is very important, guys. Equipment grounding conductor must run with every set of the parallel conductors. If I have four, you have to decide. I have a 4,000 amp 
uh, switch gear. How many runs do you want to run it by? If I run it by three, two thousand, let's let's make four, make it easy. Let's just make a four runs here. So here's a four. So Chris, uh, two thousand divided by four, that will give you five hundred. How many conductor? Six hundred or seven hundred? Do I need to carry it? So if I run four sets, four sets to carry this switch gear, guys, I need uh, 500, uh, 500 amp. What? 250? I have a 2000 amp and I need to run four sets and I need to see what's the size of the conductor that I need. So that will give me 5000 amp or 500 amp. 700? Has to be 600 or 700. How do you get size of conductor for a 500 amp panel? What do you go to size of conductor for 500 amp? 310.15B16, under 75, right? What, what do you come up? Uh, 900. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's too high based on what I told you. Absolutely, you don't want to run it. So you might have to run multiple of them. So I don't want to size it, but when you size it for me, guys, you're going to say 250 kcm, how many of them? X based on how many runs you're going to run. Okay. So if we added another one, just to make it more, uh, you, can't split that up the way you, do it. you can't split it up. Absolutely, you cannot, shall not, will not split it up. One, two, three, four, five. Now 200, 2,000 divided by five give you 400. That can be carried with 600. Yeah. yeah. So five run, for five runs, then x equal. In this case, that will be my case here. Will be five conductors. Number 250 KCM each, based on the runs. On the test, you have to tell me how many runs you're going to run. Any question, guys, about this? Any question? Now, Chris, look at the equipment bonding jumper. If I'm running five conduits here, what, how many do you think I need here? Each one of them in one conduit. You need five. This assumes, this also assumes, guys, that you're putting them all in one conduit. Are you kidding me? You're gonna put all these in one conduit? If you are, if you're having a, a five conduit, guess what's gonna happen? Each one of these conduits is gonna have its own bonding. So you're gonna have also five, in this case, based on this scenario, you're gonna have five of these. Five, 250 kcm each, one with each conduit, one with each conduit. Any question? Okay, so that's the equipment bonding jumper. Let's go, guys, to number seven. Any question about this? Really, the more run, every run have to have an equipment gun conductor in there. If we have an EMT, we might not need this one. If we're bonding them all with EMT, with bonding bushings and all this good stuff, you don't need to do to do that. You don't need an equipment gun conductor. But a 4,000 amp switch gear, most likely you pull an equipment ground conductor with it. Number seven. Oh, did we do 6.1? Uh, ah, oh, okay. 6.1, we didn't do it. Let's do 6.1. 6.1, thank you. 6.1 is brand new for you, just out of the oven of NEC 2011. That's why it's not on my sheet. Great from from many C twenty eleven guys. The smarter than Chad came with something called supply side bonding jumper. Supply side bonding jumper. The supply side bonding jumper. I'm gonna go. It's exactly guys like uh, main bonding jumper. Identical to the main bonding jumper. So where did we do the main bonding jumper? Which step was that? Three. Step three. So I'm gonna say Sam. Um, where are we though? We are in. Uh, no, no, hold your horses. This is for the separated drive system. For the separated drive system, we size it. The, okay, supply side bonding jumper for the 225 amp uh, panel. Okay, supply side bonding jumper for the 225 amp panel. Do you see where the supply side bonding jumper is, guys? Let's go back, 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 back. Back right here. Supply side bonding jumper 6.1. You size it exactly like a main bonding jumper. But look where it's located. It's located between the conduit 
bonding the conduit to the ground electrode conductor, bonding the pan basically the panel inside the panel to the transformer enclosure. The panel to the transformer enclosure. Rob, can I get you guys to see where it's bonding the enclosure of the panel into the panel, the enclosure of the transformer to the enclosure of the panel for a separate drive system? Okay, if you go there, let's go back. Okay, that's a brand new one. Okay, to size this, if you guys, you size it based on the feeders that's coming to it. So first I need your help here. We're gonna go, uh, first of all, the panel is 225 amp. I need to go to table 310.15 B16 under 75 degree column. Uh, what the size conductor do I need for this panel? Four rod. Four rod. Okay, and let's say we're gonna use four of them for full neutral, so I need four conductors, number four R. Okay? Four conductors, number four R. Cool? That's the, that's the three phase and the neutral. The three phase and neutral. Who cares? Because I need to size the system supply side bonding jumper based on the feeders that's feeding the panel. That's what the code tells you, based on the feeder that's coming out of the transformer feeding the panel. Yes, sir. You highly, 99.99% of the time, you don't tie any empty to a transformer because of vibration. With the end of the last section, they take a flexible metallic conduit for flexibility between a transformer that can hum and vibrate. Do you want to cond rigid it to a panel? You can, you can have humming or vibration into the whole conduit system. So 99% of the time, you're going to end up doing this. Because of the, the because the transformer can vibrate and hum, you don't want to translate this vibration humming into the whole conduit system inside your building. So if you go there, guys, um, then Nick, my friend, you're going to take the then you're going to take the four out. You're going to take it to table um, table two fifty dot sixty six. What's the size? Number two. How many? One number two. Now, Chris, this is where if you parallel, you can only have one. Don't want to even open this can of worm. You can size based on every con every conductor is in a conduit, and then you run that one with every conduit, or you can size based on all of them together, and you run one. So we're not paralleling here, so we're not going to open this can of worm. Okay, two fifty. Any question guys about sizing for the panel? Uh, two fifty. And Nick, I'm assuming it's going to have a two hundred and twenty-five amp over competition device, fuse or circuit breaker at the top. Okay, so this is, uh, did we do six? So we did six, okay, we did the um, equipment conductor, number six. Number six and a half is, uh, or 6.1, as a supply side bonding jumper. Let's go to number seven, huh? Is there something interesting? Number seven, this is just because it wasn't my things to do. Number seven, guys, as um, supply, Bonding jumper um, or bonding jumper. Now, this is also bonding jumper, bond, equipment bonding jumper supply side. Equipment bonding jumper supply side. Equipment bonding jumper supply side. Equipment bonding jumper supply side uh, for the system and this is for the panel the 200 i will emphasize this is for the 250 amp panel okay the same when we size it guys sam we i will see it just say cm calculation as three same calculation as we did with number three except different sizes though we're going to take the 225 amp. Remember how we size this one, guys? Table 310.15 B16. We came up with just a minute ago with 4R, right? 
Then, then you're going to go to the four art, take the four art, because it's a separately derived system, and you're going to size it based on 250.66, exactly like the one that we just sized, one number two, conductor. I can't emphasize, guys, this is, this is coming from the feeder, feeder for, for the separately derived system. What I sized right here is the feeder for the separately derived system, right? Separate derived system. That's from the conduit. If you look where it's located, tying the conduit. This is exactly like the system bonding jumper, and, and you actually, the system bonding jumper might actually erase it. If you look where it's located, go back, Chad, go back, Chad. Right here. Do you see that from the conduit, from the flex that's coming to, to the panel, into the panel itself? And 6.1 most likely will take care of it if you have the right bushing here. Um, so that's right here. Any question guys before we move into number eight? Almost there, number eight. I'm sorry. Last page. Oh sorry, Allah Dibu. I thought you were too fast already for me. There you go. Oops, 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 went too fast. Any question, guys? So we sized all these for the switch gear. So we sized um, the equipment, all these for the switch gear. Okay. Can I go when you guys are done? Number eight. I want to do number eight. Number eight. What was number eight? Number eight was grounding in a third conductor. Okay. Number eight, my friends, is grounding electrode conductor. But for what? For uh, separate, separately, separately derived system which is basically for the 225 amp slash transformer deal the trans the 225 amp transformer and panel guys so i'm going to say same as number seven the calculation that we did for number seven guys except so that's it's going to be the same so uh, basically, we're going to take the four art, take him to table 250.66. You're going to end up with one number two, one conductor number two. I want you guys to understand when you size this though, grounding electrode conductor, number eight was it grounding electrode conductor, right? Yeah. Number yeah, grounding electrode conductor. Okay, no, we don't do that. Okay. All right, so same as same as um, step before. Same as step before. What I needed to write here, guys, I didn't write it here. Uh, for step the equipment bonding jumper. Did they do number seven? I think yeah. they equipment bonding jumper. Did they mix a seven and uh, okay? Now that's I see what you did. Okay, that's why. Okay, can I just go go here, guys? Um, okay, I see what what we did here. It was a missing supply side bonding jumper. Okay, okay. 
Number seven, can you guys erase number seven here, please, and make it some system bonding jumbo? This should be system, let's see where we are. System bonding jumbo, this we are. And you size this one exactly, exactly the same. System bonding jumper, you size it based on 225A, same calculation. Can you just change it to system bonding jumper? The only thing is just the top, system bonding jumper. That should be a system bonding jumper. And if it's a system bonding jumper, we size exactly what you're looking at, system bonding jumper. Same, same calculation. Any question is about that system bonding? The only thing I just want to system bonding jumper right under here for number seven, guys. If you look, um, if you look for number seven, it says if it's if the conductors are more than 1100 kcm, what do you do here? You have to do a 12 and a half percent for number seven. If the conductors were larger than 1100 kcm, are they? No, then you have to do a 12 and a half percent. We're not, so we're good. So thank you. Supply, bo supply side bonding jumper. Any question is about this? The grounding electrode conductor, four out, you, you. Number eight. When would seven and eight be different? Ah, if, yeah, good point. If the conductor here was more than 1100 kcm, if the conductors were more than 1100 kcm, then they will be different. Any question guys about this? So there was also a, a 1000 amp. Remember that 1000 amp that we did? The sub panel. Okay, so I'm gonna go and do, if you guys look at, uh, here's where I'm gonna go. Go back, 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 Chad, all the way. You see what that, so we did the 2000, we did the 225, right? And we did the 4000. I'm going to go back to the 1000 AM and do some calculation for this one, guys. The only thing I'm going to calculate is number four, which is piece of cake, and number one, number four, and number one, and number five. Can you guys see that? One, four, and five. Everybody can see that? One, four, and five for this, for the, for the separated drive for the uh, second building piece of cake. I want to do the calculation for the 1000 amp. So that will be number four, five, and number one. Let's do number one first. Um, okay, so let's go all the way. Number eight. So I'm going to go back to number one. Now you guys going to be yelling at me. Back to number one, except number one this time for, um, this is um, Number one was grounding electrode conductor for the 1000 amp switch gear. For the 1000 amp in separate building. In separate building. Can you guys see that? Everybody knows now we need one because it's in a separate building. We need one because it's in a separate building. Okay, so if you go there, uh, the first thing, Chris, I need your help here. Uh, I need to size the conductors because uh, number one is size based on the conductors. I have 1,000 amp. Chris, let's uh, parallel three, will you? 400. Three, what's three? Give me 333 amps. That will translate from table three, 10, that's 15, B, 16, 75 degree column. Uh, four conductors, let's just say four conductors, 500, uh, 400, Chris. 400 kcm done the first thing you need to size the conductor then since we're running uh, how many are, are we running uh we're running four or three of them so we're going to take the three multiply it by 400 kcm that will give me 1200 1200 kcm and you're going to take the 1200 kcm to table 250.66 nick there is no 12.5% for this, for the separate building. We're sizing the grounding and conductor, no main bonding jumper. We're not doing a main bonding jumper in the second building. There's exception where you do it, but 
that's the exception of the rule. Um, so the largest press is uh, one conductor, three, three odd. Thank you, three odd. So how many conductors? One. What's the size? Three odd. What uh, type? Copper. Insulated? Yep. Um, uh, bare? Yep. Uh, covered? Yep. All of the above. You can have it bare, insulated, or covered. Most likely it would be insulated. What do you mean covered? Oh, uh, covered. Oh, was good. Insulated is easy. Fully insulated. Covered is somewhere between bare. Basically, it's not voltage rated. They put a cover on them, non-conductive cover, but they're not tested for voltage insulation. You have to have a, a certain thickness of the insulation to be called insulation. Protected. Yeah, protected from the elements. It's not meant for you to grab into it. Okay, any question guys about these? So that's number one for, can I emphasize this number one is for which switch gear guys? For the 1000 amp switch gear. Why do I need actually a number one for a, a sub panel? Because it's in a separate building. If it wasn't a separate building, I, do, I wouldn't do that. I would not do that if it's not a separate building. Okay, let's go do number, okay, so for the same building, we're gonna do number, uh, let's go number five. No, yeah, can I do it in the same building? Yes, yeah, <laughs> can I do it if it's in the same building? Yes, 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 yes you can, yes. Um, if it's in a separate building is a must. Okay, can I move into number four, right? The one before, or oh, the picture? Yep. Okay, a lot of people. Why, why do you need number two? Number two here? Number two here? No. Because we're creating also, we're going to a separate building, and the code say if you go to a separate building, you have to create a new grounding electrode system in the separate building. So we have to do exactly what we did here. I'm not gonna do number two here, guys, because guess what? Number two is, gonna, is a special case, and it'll be exactly like number two here. Six, six. If you want to do number two, I can tell you right now, number two is number number six. The item number two here will be six, both of them. Oh, yeah, exactly like the one here okay. for a special case. That's why I'm going to do only one. We did one to be different. I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do, let me do number six, guys, first, and then I'll go, I'll go to four because special case. Uh, let's go no, do number six. Number six. Okay, let's go all the way to, so this will be number six for what, Chris? Number six, oops, come on, Chad. This will be number six for, uh, what did we call number six? Equipment, grounding, conductor, except it's for the 1,000 amp now, 1,000 amp switch gear, 1,000 amp switch gear. Now oh, that's a piece of cake, huh? Equipment, ground, conductor, if you guys go to number, uh, number six based on that rule, it's uh, no problem, Chad. You're going to go directly into that baby. So you're going to go to 1,000 amp. Take it to table 2, 50.122. First, what was that? I don't have that. 2 odd. 2 odd. How many? I want to put question mark and 2 odd AWG. Okay, how many? We paralleled how many sets we paralleled? We paralleled three sets, right? A minute ago about this. So that's going to be how many of them? Three. Why three? One with every set. So you need one with every set. There's one, two, three. One with every set. One with every set. Cool? Number five is very easy, guys. Number five is equipment, bonding, jumper, load side. Load side. Of course, it's in the load side of the overcome protection device in the other building. Uh, based on this, very easy. You're going to have, first, you're going to have the 1000 amp. Um, we sized it based on overcome device, right? Number six, yep, overcome device, Chad, yep. 
same calculation. Uh, table 250.66, you're going to end up with how many of them though? Since there are three conduits, there will be three of them. Three of them and two A W G. Oops. So there will be three pieces of wire, copper, two out each, tied the bonding bushing of the conduit, if it's metallic, into the grounding bar inside the panel. Why three? Anybody knows why three? I paneled three sets. So these uh, alignable will be here. Here's the bushings at the end. And these will be... We use a different table number in your notes than we use them on the board. For this? Yeah. For numbers five? Yeah. 250.122. 250.122. Yeah, 250.66 Oh, that's because I like you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That's a mistake. 250.122. Absolutely. You're right. This is not a competition device. Thanks. 250.122. Um, this one, guys, will be right here. See that one? Take it here. And take these oops, these conduits here, and you tie them all together to the ground bar. That's what we're talking about. You take the bonding bushings of each one of these conduits, and you tie them directly into the ground bar inside the building. Into the ground bar inside the building. Inside the switch gear, the switch gear for that building. Any question, guys? So that's equipment bonding jumper load side for the separate drive system. For the separate drive system. Any question? What time is it? We can't even tell what the time is. Here. Four to eleven. Okay, I'm done. Any question? Let me write the homework and then we'll 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 let you guys go. Here's what I would like you to do for the same building. Um, I'm gonna have I'm gonna write just the one line diagram like we did guys for each one of these. Here's a one line diagram. And um, we have one, two, three, I need here transformer X F R down to a panel. Okay, when I'm on the right, this is, Chris, this is homework 10. Is it 9 or 10? I believe it's 10. Homework number 10. What I would like you guys to do is the following. Um, so we did 4,000. I'm going to make this piece of equipment 3,000 amp. 3,000 amp, same calculation. I'm going to make this uh, piece of equipment uh, where's my piece of equipment here? Uh, when I make this piece of equipment, um, so let's just say this is uh, um, 1600 amp. This is separate building. Separate building. Right? That's all what you need to do. Separate building. For this piece of equipment, I'm going to make it um, 1200 amp. Is there an overcompetition device 1200 amp? There is. Yeah. There is? Okay. I just want to make sure that I land on a 1200. Okay. 1200 amp. And this piece of equipment here, guys, I need a 400 amp. Okay. Uh, the voltage here is 208 slash 120. The voltage here is 480 slash 277. And the voltage here is 480-277-480-277. Okay, I care less about the size of the feeders unless they're related to sizing the conductor. So can I get everybody you guys to understand what, what I need you to do? Do all these steps, Dustin, my friend, if you guys can do all these steps for this system, exactly what I've done. Um, yes, sir. This may be a dumb question. Yeah. But I counted up our amps there, and it's 3,600 amps. Uh, so it doesn't add up to 3,000. How come that? Because the size is based on diversity factor. They don't. Mistake number one, guys, if you add 
the over temptation devices add more love. Should they add up to the main over temptation device? No, because there's diversity factor that we use. So meaning it's highly unlikely that all these loads will be running at the same time. So if you take this panel right here, add the 15, 15, 20, 20, you'll end up with four, three times. These are over temptation devices inside a panel. Any question guys about homework number 10? Can I have thumbs up, Chad? We we got it? Cool? Oh my god, drop that thing out of my face here. Any question? Okay. That's it.